The Jaws of Life technique for complex filter retrieval begins with a CT scan during the initial office visit to look for clot in the filter, penetration of filter components, and any fracture of filter components. The procedure is performed via a right internal jugular approach for most filters. A 45 centimeter long 12 French sheath is placed coaxially inside of a 30 centimeter long 14 French sheath. This combination provides some stability as the forceps are passed through the heart and mediastinum and also allows some flexibility when manipulating the filter. The forceps arrive from the manufacturer straight and must be bent in order to allow manipulation and access to the tip of the filter. An assistant should hold the handle of the forceps while the tip is bent in roughly the same configuration as the access needle used for a tips. After this manipulation, the forceps should be checked to ensure that the jaw works properly. Magnified spot films are taken in three projections to look for any fractures which might have been missed on CT scanning. This is followed by rotational cavography, which is done to look for the relationship of the filter tip to the wall of the inferior vena cava. We consider rotational cavography to be an essential component of any filter removal procedure because it allows the operator to determine whether conventional techniques can be used versus more advanced techniques such as the jaws of life. Once the forceps have been inserted through the sheath, the operator uses a combination of torquing maneuvers and opening and closing the forceps in an effort to be able to feel the tip of the filter within the forceps. Through this process, with time, the operator will begin to feel metal on metal, which is a sign that progress is being made. If the initial rotating maneuvers do not result in at least partial contact with the head of the filter, the operator should withdraw the forceps and bend them further or less in order to get better contact. Once the filter tip has been grasped, the forceps should be turned from side to side to ensure that the tip is not protruding from the side of the jaws. This will prevent retraction into the sheath. Once the filter is lined up correctly, the sheath is pushed down or the filter is withdrawn depending upon the filter design. In this example with a different filter design, note that the sheath itself is sometimes used to aid in the dissection. Once again, once the filter is captured, the operator needs to ensure that it is not protruding from the side of the jaws, which will prevent retraction into the sheath. Once firmly captured, the filter can be removed by oversheathing, withdrawal, or a combination of the two. Sometimes, even if the manufacturer's instructions call for oversheathing, a combination of the two is necessary, as in the case shown here, where a filter strut is embedded in the bone. Once the filter has been removed, a completion cavogram is performed. The Jaws of Life procedure is performed on an outpatient basis with a two to four hour recovery depending upon the difficulty of the retrieval.